Hey guys, if you know nothing at all about FreeCAD, but you want to, then hopefully you're in the right place. Probably, like me, you enjoy making things, and today we're going to do just that. We're going to make this simple phone holder by designing the 3D print within FreeCAD. Now today, I'm not going to worry about the niceties of FreeCAD. Instead, we're going to dive straight in and make something. We'll worry about what knob does what later on. Right now, we're going to give you the confidence to tackle this amazingly versatile free package and actually make something tangible. I'm assuming you visited FreeCAD.org, downloaded the software, installed it, opened it, and are looking at the same screen as we're looking at now. And the first thing you're thinking is, ah, and that's okay, don't worry about it. There's loads of things going on here, and we really don't care. Not today, anyway. We're going straight up to the top here, where it says Start, and clicking this reveals a list of workbenches, and we'll discuss these another day. For now, all we're looking for is Part Design, because we're going to design a part. So we'll click Part Design, and nothing much happens except this area turns blue. So what we do now is use this great big plus button and we'll click create new click and nothing much happens except this area turns blue. But over on the left underneath tasks, it says create a body. So we'll click that. And now it says create a sketch. So we'll click that. And now we have this strange matrix looking thing, which is our three dimensional world, the space where we can actually build anything we like. Now, if you come to the top right corner, we can see this cube. This handy control helps us orientate our 3D world, and clicking these arrows will help us rotate our planes. If this is unfamiliar to you, again, don't worry about it. Instead, just keep clicking until you find the right plane, which is the one we'll use today. And you'll see our little matrix thingy now says YZ plane, and that's perfect. So we just need to click on this matrix thingy until it turns green. And now we head over to the left and we click OK. We're now in the sketch area. Before we can make a three dimensional object, we have to make a two dimensional sketch, which is what we're going to do right now. But before we do anything here, there's a very important tip I'd like to give you. Because we can draw anywhere in our three dimensional space, it's possible to get lost, especially if we're joining two or more parts together. So we want a reference point to measure everything from. And that's this point here, this central dot. If that doesn't make much sense, then again, just trust me, always begin your sketches from this point. We'll start by drawing a line and you can select this little line tool icon up here on the toolbar, or you might prefer the keyboard shortcut L, L for line. So I'll click L, and we can see that the cursor has changed to show us that the line tool has been selected. So with my line tool activated, I'll hover over the point until it turns yellow and click. Now, as I move the mouse outwards, FreeCAD starts to draw a line and wherever I click, the line will end. So I'm going to draw all the way over here, and please, if you're following along, do exactly the same as me. So nice and far over here on the right, making sure that the line is yellow, and click, we've drawn our first line. A useful feature of FreeCAD is that once a tool is selected, it stays selected until another tool is chosen or the current tool is released by clicking Escape. So if I click here and here, I get a line, or here and here, or here and here, because the line tool remains active until deselected. But I don't want these lines, so I'm going to undo those, and I'll use the fairly universal keyboard shortcut of Control and Z, or Control and Z to our American friends. Now we're actually trying to draw the side profile of our phone holder, and as you can see, it's basically an equilateral triangle. So returning to our sketch, I'll draw a diagonal line, hovering over the center point until it turns yellow and click. Now come up over here somewhere and click. Now that's pretty rubbish. 
If my maths teacher was right, an equilateral triangle should have an angle of 60 degrees, and that's nothing like 60. So what we need to do now is constrain this line and force it to an angle of 60 degrees. And we can do this by using constraints. Whoa, look at the way I seamlessly flowed into that. Constraints are exactly what they sound like. They are functions or rules that force lines, curves, distances, etc. to do exactly what we tell them to do. And if on the toolbar we click our mouse here, we can see a whole bunch of constraints. And the one we're looking for is this one, the one that looks like the letter A after it's had a bit too much to drink. So I'll click it, and now I'll click this line, and this line. And FreeCAD says, hey, what angle do you want? And I'll enter 60. And look at that. Now we have a perfect 60 degree angle to this diagonal line. Coming back to our phone holder, this side has a length of 75 millimeters. And we need to apply that same dimension to our sketch. Now it's worth saying, if you prefer to work in inches, FreeCAD would allow you to change your unit preferences. But we've ignored all that here today. We're using FreeCAD literally as it comes out of the box. Anyway, there's a few ways of adding dimensions within FreeCAD. And if we access the constraints on the toolbar, this double-headed arrow distance constraint is my preference. So I'll click this and it wants to select two points. So I'll click that point there and I'll click that point there. And FreeCAD says, what size do you want? And I'll type in 75 and enter. And here we have a 75 millimeter line, which we can't see. Thank you, FreeCAD. So if we move the scroll wheel on our mouse, one way we zoom in. And if we scroll the other way, we zoom out. If we click and hold that same scroll wheel, we can drag our sketch wherever we want to. Seeing these measurements is useful, but they can get in the way of our sketch, which is annoying. So if I click Escape to deselect our tool and return to the usual mouse pointer, I can click on the measurement. It changes color and I can drag it anywhere I want on the page. Now then, as our triangle is missing a third side, I'll click L for the line tool and I'll click this top point here. And you might think I'm going to join up at the bottom, but actually I'm going to shoot a little past this. And again, if you're following along, please make sure you do exactly the same as I do. It will all make sense in the end. So is this top angle 60 degrees? Well, it might be pretty close, but we want it to be exact. So I'll head up to our constraints and I'll click on the drunken A angle constraint. We'll click that line and that line and enter 60. Looking at the profile of our model for a moment, we need to represent the thickness of these walls. So I'll click L for my line tool and add in three lines. Now this is quite important. If I zoom in here, do you see the little red dash? Well, FreeCAD is pretty clever. It always tries to draw horizontal and perpendicular lines where it can. And here it's assumed that my bottom line was supposed to be parallel with the one beneath it. And that's what this little parallel symbol is telling us. However, this line doesn't look parallel with this one, nor do these two look parallel. And of course, we need them to be parallel. So I'll head up to our constraints, and this is the one we need, these two lines, one slightly bigger than the other. So I'll click that, then I'll click the line I want to alter, and then I'll click the one I'm comparing it to. And look at that, it's nice and parallel. Something has gone wrong up here, but let's ignore that for a moment and make our other lines parallel, like this. Zooming in on our little problem area, we can see that everything has come apart and things are always coming apart in FreeCAD, which is why they've made sure this constraint is so accessible. It looks a little like a point having a panic attack, doesn't it? Now, this constraint bonds points firmly together. So let's give it a click and then click here and click here. And now they've joined. 
If we look down the bottom here and zoom in, we have the same problem. So click, click, and it's sorted. We now need to apply a thickness to these interior walls, and we want them all to be the same. And we can control this with our distance constraint, the double-headed arrow. Now this does like to work on two points, but it will also work on a point and a line, like this. It's asking for a distance and we'll say five millimeters. We can use the same point again on this side and again go with five millimeters. But oh, look at this mess. Our inside is now on the outside, but don't panic. We can easily pull that back. I'll click escape to exit the distance constraint and I'll just click and drag this point here, pulling the line back where it belongs. Now we can use our distance constraint again. And there we go. Things turn green in FreeCAD when they are properly constrained and fixed firmly into our three dimensional space, which is a good thing to achieve. But we're not going to worry too much about that here today. Looking at our model again, we need to add this shelf that supports the mobile phone. And I'm going to very crudely draw this in using the line tool. Utter rubbish. It looks like it was built by my brother-in-law. But that doesn't matter because we can easily sort this out. What we want is for this line to be nice and perpendicular with this line. So this angle is 90 degrees. And you've guessed it, there's a constraint for that. So we'll go up here and there's this T, which we can think of as a T square. That's our starting line, click. And that's the one we want to change, click. And look at that, very nice. So we can pretty much apply the same constraint all around here. But once again, FreeCAD has fallen apart on us. So let's use the easy access panicking point, the joining constraint, and cement things back together. And that's not looking bad at all, all except this line here. We could correct this with the same T-square perpendicular constraint, or we could vary life a bit and use the parallel constraint. So the shelf looks better, but it's clear the walls aren't the same thickness as our triangle. So we'll click on the distance constraint and fix them. Our phone will sit on the shelf here and this lip will keep it safe, but it doesn't need to be too tall. So let's make it five millimeters again because I have no imagination. I've already measured the thickness of my mobile phone and you might want to do the same with yours. But for me, 10 millimeters will be ample with a little wiggle room to spare. It looks a bit of a mess with all these red lines, so I'll click escape, then clear and drag these measurements out of the way. If I grab and pull this point here, the shelf moves up and down like it's on rails. It can't move in any other direction because we fix things with constraints. So we need to decide a height measurement for our shelf using the distance constraint. And I'm going to go with 10 millimeters. And that's looking pretty good, but I want to make it even prettier. So I'm going to add a fillet into these two corners. On the toolbar, we'll find these filleting tools and I'm going to choose the second one, the constraint fillet. Then click this line and this line. That looks nice, but it could be better. So I'll constrain the distance of the fillet from point to point. And I think I'll go with 25 millimeters. Yes, I like that. So let's put one at the top as well. So it's constraint fillet, click and click. Now the distance constraint of 25 millimeters. Of course, we don't have a fillet at the bottom right corner as our design calls for this to be open. So to finish it off, I want a temporary line from this point downwards, but I want this line to be perpendicular. So we'll use the T squared looking perpendicular constraint from here like this. It's looking pretty messy here now with all these stray lines going everywhere. And I want to get rid of some of these. So I'll use the trim tool, which is this one here. So watch this. 
there and again and again. And yes, things are turning green and then not green. And again, please don't worry about this today. We need this line to be all the way over here. So I'll escape the selected tool and try to drag it. But look what happens. I'll quickly undo that. However, there's nothing stopping us from using the line tool and extending it that way. I'll use the trim tool again to tidy things up, starting with this bit. Now at a quick glance, that looks like the side profile of our phone holder, and you might think we're finished. Actually we're not, but for the moment we'll pretend we are. So on the left side here, I'll click update, which doesn't always do anything, but it's a good habit to get into now. And then we'll click close. And of course, good old FreeCAD is obscuring our view a bit. So I'll press and hold the mouse scroll wheel and drag everything into view. The shape looks almost perfect, but if we look here, I pretended to forget to trim this line. And the reason I did this was to show you that you can come in and out of the sketch environment without fear of ruining anything. On the left here, where it says Combo View, we click the Model tab, and we can then see on this list the word Sketch. So let's double click that. And here we are back in our sketching environment. I'll select the Trim tool and remove this tiny line. Now once again, we'll click Update for good practice, and finally Close. So here's our finished two-dimensional shape, which we can now make into a three-dimensional shape. To do this, we'll head over to the left again to the Combo View section, and we'll click this Tasks tab. As the name suggests, this shows us a list of tasks, which we can now apply to our sketch. Now you might be expecting me to extrude this, especially if you're familiar with Fusion 360. But no, FreeCAD does have an extrude function and we may cover that in another tutorial. But for today, what we're looking for is Pad. So if I click Pad, we'll see our sketch has turned gray. Well, actually it's done a little more than that. If I rotate this sketch, by holding down Shift and the right mouse button, I can pan slightly. You can see that we have a 3D shape. FreeCAD has automatically created it with a depth of 10 millimeters, as we can see over here. So what we can do is change this value to one of our choosing, which for me is 75 millimeters. And look at that. That's almost our finished phone holder. But I want to do a couple more things to really pretty this up. I'm going to come down to this very back bottom edge and click it. Now in the task bar on the left, FreeCAD has given us a list of some things we can do to this selected area. And I'm going to click the Create a Datum Plane. This will add a plane that physically touches the selected face. I'll click OK because I'm happy with that. And now I'll click the plane itself, turning it green. Looking at our taskbar again, we have the option to create a sketch. And that's what I'm going to do. And FreeCAD turns our world upside down again. So I'll mess with these arrows to correct our orientation. And I'm now looking at the rear from the proper angle. Something that always brings me pleasure. But we'll just double check by holding shift and the right mouse button together and panning a little. And yes, we're where we need to be. Now I'll zoom in a bit using the scroll wheel and I want to draw some temporary construction lines. So press L and begin at the center point like we always should. I'll extend the line all the way over here, making sure it stays yellow. Now I need an exact length to this line. I want it to be half of the full length, which as you recall is 75 millimeters. And because I'm terrible at maths, I'll have FreeCAD do the work for me. So I'll enter 75 
divided by 2 and enter. And there we go, FreeCAD's worked it out correctly. Now I need a perpendicular line from this point, so I'll deliberately make this a little crooked, so I can select the perpendicular constraint tool and make it perfect, like that. Now we have a very aesthetically pleasing hole passing through our phone holder. So on our toolbar, we'll select the slot sketch tool. And we'll come over onto our vertical line anywhere as long as the line stays yellow and click. Then we'll move outwards and click again, creating something a bit messy, but don't worry, we can soon fix that. We'll use our distance constraint again and give this slot a width of 25 millimeters. For the height, we're going to be artistic. Forget the maths and go with the flow for a moment. So we'll click escape to free up our mouse pointer and then drag down. Look carefully in the background and you can see the shape of the holder. So we want to keep a reasonable distance from the top edge, like that. And this is the bottom edge, so we've got to allow for the thickness of the floor and just drag until we think it looks good. Now we can get rid of our lines and we'll use the trim tool again, like this. But watch what happens now. FreeCAD throws up an error message which actually contains some words in English, though not necessarily in an order that we can understand. But the gist of it is this. You can't trim something that doesn't extend beyond two points. But luckily, we can delete it. So I'll just close the judgmental error box and click our line once, turning it green. And now I'll click the delete button on my keyboard. Now I'll do the same again with a click and delete. Don't touch this slot again at this point as we've removed all the constraints that were holding it in place. Something that we really shouldn't do, but today, who cares, right? And we'll click Update and Close. We can see our slot is green, and under Tasks, we have a list of things we can do. Now you might expect us to use Pad again and cut a hole, but no, this is FreeCAD, and it has a dedicated function called Pocket. So we'll click Pocket and look there's already a bit of a hole forming in our holder. We can see on the left, the pocket is automatically five millimeters deep. So if we increase it, we can see the hole getting deeper. And I'm not going to worry about maths here. I'll just keep clicking until the hole is way through the other side, like that. Using shift and the right mouse button, I can clumsily pan around and things are looking pretty good. This datum plane is spoiling our view, so on the left side here, we'll click Model, and amongst this list, we can see Datum Plane. If I click it, we'll see that it turns green. If I hit the spacebar on the keyboard, it becomes invisible. Click spacebar and it's back, click spacebar and it's gone again. And that's a useful keyboard shortcut for you to remember. That leaves our 3D model looking great. In fact, all I want to do now is add a few fillets to soften these edges. Now, if I click this edge here, it selects. But if I click this edge here, it becomes obvious that we can only select one edge at a time. But if we hold down the control button and click, we can select multiple edges like this. Releasing the control key a moment, I'll hold shift and right mouse button to pan our object around like so. Now holding down control, I can select more edges. If we look to the left and click the task tab, amongst the list of things we can do is fill it. So I'll click that and look, FreeCAD has automatically applied a fillet of one millimeter but I'm going to change that figure to 1.5 millimeters. And finally, we've finished our first 3D creation in FreeCAD. All we need to do now is export this as a printable file. 
On the left, we'll click the Model tab. Now we just click Body once, and our 3D model turns green. At the top of the page, click File and choose Export. Now we can export in a variety of formats, but here I'd recommend SDL and save this somewhere on your PC. And here it is, a finished printable 3D model designed exclusively in FreeCAD. And thankfully, it's the end of an epic tutorial. Now, this isn't a perfect tutorial. It was very rough and ready, and a lot of important steps were deliberately missed out to keep things basic but doable. So those points and more will need to be revisited in another tutorial. But hopefully today, you've gained enough insight and confidence to follow this video through and then have a go at creating a few things of your own. But for now, that's it. So take care guys, and thanks for watching.